Deshaun Watson, this one kind of came out of the blue, and we've been waiting and watching and wondering when the NFL is going to propose some sort of a discipline of Deshaun Watson. If any, that would initiate the disciplinary officer process. Judge Sue L. Robinson would then take over and investigate, have a hearing, issue a decision. The commissioner would have appeal jurisdiction over that. We're waiting for that to start. It's going to take some time. The sooner it starts, the sooner it ends, the sooner everyone knows whether or not Deshaun Watson will miss any, some, or all of the 2022 season. While we wait for that, something that we didn't know we were waiting for, 23rd lawsuit filed yesterday Yikes. against Deshaun Watson alleging sexual misconduct during massage therapy sessions. This seems to be someone that they anticipated would potentially sue and hadn't. According to the lawsuit, the plaintiff claims that she decided to proceed after watching the feature last week on Real Sports with Brian Gumbel on HBO, interviewed a couple of the individuals who are suing Deshaun Watson, presented both sides of it, made some arguments, had some information, et cetera. Something about that caused her to go forward. Now, Rusty Harden, who represents Deshaun Watson, issued a scathing statement. The full language of it is at PFT. But the attack continues on the lawyer, the common thread for all 23 of these plaintiffs, because Tony Busby also represents the woman who sued on Tuesday. So they're going after him. This is all about him. I still think that's tough to pull off because you are suggesting that 23 people are coming together and being led all over the place in a pack with no fracture, with no fissure, with no fraying. They're holding them together, and common sense tells us there's going to be some of those 23 pissed off, some of those 23 impatient, some of those 23 not on board with it, some of those 23 are just done with it, can't do it anymore, don't want to do it anymore. I didn't sign up for this. I thought it was a quick payday. I thought we were just you know, in and settle and done. None of that. There's none of that that's come to light. And if you're going to go after Tony Busby and try to bring down all 23 cases by targeting him, Chris, you would expect that Rusty Harden's people would find something along those lines. The fact that we haven't heard that makes me think that they haven't found it. I doubt that they haven't tried. So 23, again, I don't know what the magic number is to get people to say it's too damn many. It's somewhere between 1 and 23. It was somewhere between 1 and 22. What does it take? 33, 43, 53? Well, 23 because Mike, people. people people are still caught up in that the grand jury didn't two different grand juries didn't indict. So that's that's the first thing you see when you kind of read through social media or comments below any article written about the subject. That that's still a big talking point for people to say, you know, that he's not that he's not guilty because of that. And of course, I know you've explained that very well, but I feel like again, there's a lot of people on social media or in or involved in this subject that don't seem to really want to pay attention to the full scope of the subject. I think that's what's funny. They kind of only taken the little tidbits and they don't really know how the process works or the exact information. And that's where it's a little surprising. And it, and then it comes off, of course, as you know, more times than not, very insensitive on social media with, with some of the things people say that are just absolutely crazy. The problem, too, is like everything else in our current society, we go into our our corners, our camps, our tribes, and we hunker down and we say whatever we have to say to advance the interests of whoever side we're on, regardless of whether or not there's facts. First thing I see yesterday, and it's not a surprise, the responses to the tweet that we post with the story at PFT, money grab. How do you know it's a money grab? How do you know? You can't just assume it's yeah, a money grab. Yeah, that's what I mean. Right, right. You can't assume that it's valid or invalid just based upon the existence of the lawsuit. But the existence of the lawsuit forces Deshaun Watson to deal with it. Now there are 23 of them. And the grand jury argument, that's something that Rusty Harden made in a podcast appearance right, with Gabe Feldman right. last week. The idea that, hey, if the grand jury decided not to indict, that means the grand jury found there isn't even probable cause to believe that these crimes happened. So there were no crimes. There should be no punishment. Rusty Harden's taken that approach because his only way out of this thing is to convince the disciplinary officer to impose no discipline at all on Deshaun Watson. If she imposes no discipline at all, the hands of Roger Goodell become bound. He cannot at that point do anything to Deshaun Watson on appeal. That's the only way a guy avoids 
the commissioner having final say. You know, they tried to set up a process that looks independent, and it kind of does. But at the end of the day, the commissioner still decides what to do. And the example I've been using, and look, I don't know that it's going to happen this way, but it could. The league proposes a one-year suspension. Judge Sue L. Robinson decides it's going to be two games. Roger Goodell on appeal says, thank you for your service, Judge Robinson, but I'm persuaded by the NFL's argument. You know, the people that I've hired to make these decisions, the people that work for me, the people that report to me, the people that checked with me before we decided to suspend him for a year, I'm going to defer to them and suspend him for a year. Boom. Nothing anybody can do about it after that point. It's over. It's done. Negotiated CBA process for imposing discipline. We've seen others try to fight it like Ezekiel Elliott, Tom Brady. It ain't going to work. It's not going to happen. You lose at that point. So the only way, the only way to avoid Goodell having final say over this is to have no discipline at all. And that's why Rusty Harden is pushing this idea This notion, this argument that I think is misplaced, that because he wasn't indicted, it means he's completely innocent. It doesn't. It It doesn't. doesn't. Because because the, 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 the prosecutors have such broad discretion. The saying, and he warped this saying in his podcast appearance, a prosecutor can indict a ham sandwich if the prosecutor wants to. That's true. But the flip side's also true. The prosecutor cannot indict a ham sandwich or a murderer or anybody if the prosecutor doesn't want to, because at the end of the day, the standard for the grand jury is probable cause. Okay, fine. The jury, the grand jury finds probable cause. Now the prosecutor's got to go forward and try to prove beyond a reasonable doubt. So if you don't think you're going to, and think about this, you got two people in the room. Yeah. It's he said, he said, she said, said. she said, that's all I know. Are you, are you ever, ever going to prove anything beyond a reasonable doubt when you have, he said, she said, It's very difficult to prove beyond a reasonable doubt when there's no one to break the tie. And and I I could see the prosecutor in these cases after being worked and worked and worked by Rusty Harden and his people for months, months of pressure and persuasion and persistence saying, I just don't want to mess with this. I don't want to spend the next year of my life with these 22 or however many criminal complaints would have become indictments. I don't want to prosecute these because this guy isn't going to rest until he gets his guy acquitted. And I don't want to lose. I never want to lose, but I don't want to lose 10, 12, however many cases there were that all made it to a grand jury. So I think it was 10 at the end of the day. So that that's the other side of this. That's why it's not exoneration. Remember when Shefty tried to suggest it was exoneration yeah, and sure. he got shouted down right. and actually, actually unstepped on the rake and, and clarified yeah, it's not exoneration, but that's all Rusty Harden has at this point. So yeah, he's trying to push right. it as exoneration. Right. They're trying to he's trying to win a little bit of the public PR battle. I don't think he's really winning. You know, not one with, you know, that argument. The argument of, you know, the the Tony Busby as far as, you know, let's attack him and attack his credibility and it's a witch hunt and all that stuff. I mean, you said it right. I mean, come on. Tony Busby, we've gotten this far, this many people, nobody's tattletale that hasn't fell apart. We hear no rumors, nothing. I mean, again, if we heard stuff like that and it started to fall apart, okay, then we start to question things. But to this point, it's been, I mean, ironclad. There's been no issue. I mean, so I, I feel I find it hard to attack Tony Busby's credibility as far as that's concerned. He, he might be a showman and cocky and whatever else, but I, I don't get the sense that, you know, we're we're at a point here. I mean, again, Busby's kept it very tight. He should be running the CIA as far as I'm concerned. Because like you said, you can't keep secrets with that many people if it was really an inside deal to screw over Deshaun Watson. Come on, that's like crazy and sensitive for people to think that. You know, again, I don't know if all 23 people, you know, have a case here. But again, where there's smoke, there's fire. There's 23. There's another 18 that he used to get massages from. Oh, and nothing happened. It doesn't matter. That's still weird. It's weird. That's where people are, are dropping the ball here. And then, you know, for people to think, the, the, well, HBO did this, and now we have another lawsuit. I mean, come on. You know, people, oh, they're, they're just trying to get attention. No, no, this is not an easy subject to come forward for anybody, you know, let alone, you know, a female who was put in an awkward position. It's not easy to come forward. 
You're going to have to now tell all your secrets to family members, and you're going to go under public scrutiny, and you got to tell details of maybe some of the gross things that Deshaun Watson might have done, like we've heard from the other people. That's that's not easy to go, oh, yeah, here's my life, and that, that's been going on in it, in my brain, and, you know, well, no problem. I'm just – I'll go on with life. No problem. I and mean, so people are crazy, and I just can't get over how insensitive some people are on, on social media about the subject. And this is court of public opinion type stuff. Rusty Harden has said not that long ago that he's trying not to engage in the court of public opinion. Well, of course you are. You have to. You have to because public opinion is going to drive this. The entire NFL personal conduct policy is about public opinion and public perception and getting the public's expectations set in a certain way. So he's trying in some respects to engage in a battle in the court of public opinion and failing. And that's the one thing Tony Busby has done well from the get-go. He has seized the momentum from day one in the court of public opinion. And look, it's 23 people. I keep coming back to that. And that question was posed to one of the lawyers, Leah Graham, last week by Soledad O'Brien. Why do we believe one over at the time 22, now 23, and the answer was it's all about Busby. Busby wants to enhance his social media following and get on TV shows like this. And I just think the average person is not going to buy that. 23, and again, the fact that he's held 23 together, you can't hold 23 together if it's all fake and phony and manufactured and embellished and fabricated. You cannot do it. You cannot do it for 15 months. No, you can't. And, and if he has, unbelievable. Subject. If he if he's managed to hold together 23 meritless cases with people who just want to be done with, who don't want to be sitting in these depositions, don't want to be asked these hostile questions, don't want to have to deal with all the stress. Just give me my money and let me go forward. You told me I was getting paid for this. I mean, again, if we're accepting the fact that these are all meritless cases that Tony Busby has somehow spun together. At some point, they fall apart. Exactly. At some point, they fall apart. And maybe they fall apart today. I don't know. But with each passing day, it's hard to believe they're going to fall apart at some point. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.